Eric Darling here again. The Darling data. No one from Microsoft has yet tried to acquire me based on the terms and conditions laid out in my last video. So uh, I guess I'll just soldier on here and uh, keep keep pumping these things out and hope that someone out there says, "Boy, that fellow looks useful. Let's let's hire him." to do some stuff to our SQL servers. Or they'll just watch all my videos and learn, learn, every, learn all my tricks. Who knows? Who knows what'll happen? It's a cliffhanger. So this video is uh, different ways that I tend to use SP Blitz Cache, uh, originally written by Oh, just, just, we'll just say, use your usual stuff. The lovely, talented, hyper ultra cool Jeremiah Peshka, and of course, maintained over these many years by thousands of happy people. Okay, maybe like a, a dozen happy people. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I guess depending on how much of the the query plan XML they had to dig into would would dictate if they are indeed truly happy people or not because I can tell you when I was adding a lot of um, XML parse into this it was uh, some of the roughest days of my life so I'm going to talk about there's not again demo server hasn't hasn't been a lot going on in there so there's not really going to be any big fireworks if I run this to get results. So I'm just going to talk through some of the different ways and um, and sort of caveats and gotchas that um, I use SP Blitz Cache to, to figure out. Uh, <clears throat> now, got to say it up front, say it loud and clear. The plan cache is a terribly unstable place. Um, Oftentimes, when I go to look and see uh, what's in there, uh, there's a little there's a little warning that that pops up in Blitz Cache about plan cache instability. This is one thing that I will show you. Um, it's uh, going to be a line like this here. So, because my plan cache is apparently relatively stable. Because there's not a lot going on on my server, you can kind of tell by this, like a lot of just the system queries that have been running on here. Um, all right, my my kid put a band-aid on me. She pretended to give me a shot, actually two of them. So that's why I have band-aids on me. I just forgot to take them off. And you know what? I rather like them, so I'm going to keep them on. So uh, depending on how unstable your plan cache is, this might move up higher in the priorities. But this line here will tell you um, oh, no, sorry, this line here will tell you what percentage were created within a few time frames. Um, they're, they're not terribly scientific. It's just last 24 hours, last four hour, and last hour. And a lot of the times when I see this on servers that are like really active, you'll see something like, a, like you know, some really high percentage of plans were created in the last like, you know, one in four hours. And like almost 100% were created in the last 24 hours. And it just doesn't give you the type of real historical view of which queries ran on your server and um, caused problems at various points. It's all sort of very, I don't know, it seems very short term to me, just for a lot of reasons. The plan cache clears out for, you know, memory pressure restarts, some settings changes, you know, people, you know, dorking around with stuff. Um, particularly a lot of the servers that I look at, you know, tend to have pretty severe memory pressure issues. So we're lucky if the plan cache even has like, you know, a decent amount of plans that are an hour or more old. So it's a little, it's a little tough to love the plan cache these days. You know, back when it was all we had, made the best of it. But now that, now that we have query store, I tend to spend more time in there than anything. Now, uh, one of my go-to sort orders for Blitz Cache, and even for, you know, you looking at the query store with my store procedure, SP Quickie Store, is uh, average CPU. 
And the reason for that is because when I find queries that have a high average CPU, I have pretty good confidence that those are queries that I can make meaningful adjustments to to fix. The thing is, sometimes when you sort by average CPU, you find stuff that uh, doesn't matter a lot. It might only execute once a day. It might execute once uh, once a night. You know, it, it might be some background task that doesn't really have any impact on end users aside from the fact that, you know, it took up resources that the end users could have used while the query was running. Um, and, and that can, you know, that, that can be a little frustrating, you know, especially, you know, if you're working with people who don't know uh, what, what, like, you know, sort of, like, can't point you to which queries they want fixed. It's up to you to go and find them. And if you find, if, if you know your initial search is a bunch of meaningless queries that don't really uh, do a whole lot uh, to affect the sort of general user workload, then you haven't really found queries worth tuning. You know? I mean, you you might you might have that like people say they're not doing anything bad, but they're actually doing a lot of bad stuff. But you know, again, you tend to want to focus on the things that like users are really feeling up front. So. Uh, Average CPU is my favorite sort order, but sometimes you need to add some caveats to that. Now, one good caveat to add to that is that some queries need to have some minimum number of executions in order to be considered, you know, part of the regular user workload and things that are worth tuning. Sort of generally, the more frequently something runs, uh, the less chance there, there is of it having like a super high average CPU. Like it very well could, but you know, uh, a lot of the times when I, I go and look for this stuff, you know, like as, as I bump the minimum execution count up, the average CPU tends to trend down. Like there are going to be some outliers in there, but for the most part, that's what happens. So there is a, you do have to sort of strike a balance between, you know, what you like finding long running queries and finding long running queries that you know end users are, are the ones executing. So uh, the other thing to keep in mind too is uh, something that you know, I brought up in a number of videos is that you know not every query is going to be properly parameterized. Um, uh, you might ha if you have unparameterized queries and SQL servers interpreting or even if you have queries that are parameterized but not strongly typed, so things like strings end up getting like all different lengths when they get passed in, SQL Server is going to be interpreting those as brand new queries, and you're going to get brand new query plans, almost all of them, unless you, you know, happen to match something exactly. You might see like a couple of you get reused. But um, then like those would only have a, might only show a single execution, but there would be many sort of variants of that query that all got like the same or a similarly, uh, or I'm, even, I'm not even gonna call the execution plan bad. I'm just gonna say that the query didn't perform well. So there might be like, you know, what looks like one query that didn't perform well, but it's actually just one query that's a variation of like 50 queries that all got, you know, all took a long time, but they just had like a couple few literal values different in them. So, uh, you know, you, you, Sometimes you don't want to set that minimum execution count too, too high because you'll miss out on a lot of the stuff that, you know, uh, could, could be painful to end users, but just may not appear to be because of the execution count that you see from the plan cache. Um, I don't know, usually when that's the case, though, you'll see like five or six queries that all like look like the same beginning of a select statement or something. And then as you get further into the query text, you'll find the literal values that caused the SQL Server to interpret them as different plans, but you know, again, uh, all things all things you learn over time. Uh, one particularly interesting sort order um, that SP Blitz ca Blitz Cache has is unused memory grant. So unused memory grant is good because um, the plan cache actually has something that query store doesn't, in that. Uh, the plan uh, the plan cache tracks how much memory a query was granted and how much memory a query used. The query store only tracks how much a query used. It doesn't track what the grant was. I would imagine this has something to do 
with all the, the memory grant feedback stuff, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. But I don't know. It's just, it's, it, it seems weird to me for Query Store not to have that. It's just, I don't understand what led to that design choice. Uh, <coughs> so, but these are good things to track down. Um, you know, uh, by default, SQL Server will give 25, well, 20 to 25 percent of your server's max server memory setting to a single query. Right? The more more memory you have in a server, the higher your max server memory setting goes. The higher that memory grant can go. And uh, a lot of the times, just due to you know the the bad estimates or um, you know. Lots of reasons why SQL Server might not come up with a great estimate. You could overestimate the number of rows by quite a bit. And overestimating the number of rows will inflate your memory grant. So um, I'm actually working with a client now that has a couple terabytes of memory in their server, and there are regularly queries that ask for uh, an excess of 300 gigs for a memory grant, but only end up using like two or 300 megs of it. In their case, it's a slightly easier thing to, to, uh, to take care of in one swath because you can change resource governor to change that max query percent to a much lower number that's more suitable to query to servers with a lot of uh, memory on them to reduce query memory grants down sort of globally but um, if you're on standard edition you're, you're screwed and you have to use like the max grant percent hence if you can um, query store hence will be really useful for that because um, you know we'll have a little bit more control over stuff. I don't, I don't quite trust the the batch mode, uh, the memory grant feedback mechanism to take care of things the way it should in all cases. So you know, we have we have we have that to contend with. Uh, another good way to look at your plan cache, and um, this is a great way to find uh, non alignable scalar UDFs cursors, other things like that, that uh, have a really high frequency of execution. That, that sort order there is XPM, that's executions per minute. Uh, I don't know why it's XPM and not EPM. Could ask, ask Jeremiah that someday. He's the one who came up with that, that rambunctious little shortcut. Uh, not quite sure. But you know what? I like it. XPM sounds cool. XPM sounds exciting, right? Uh, so that's, that's, a good way to find really frequently run code. Um, you might also just find a lot of queries that like run hundreds of thousands of times for like a millisecond. Could be an application bug. Could be something that could be cached somewhere. Who knows? There's lots of lots of like weird little things like that you might run into. Um, one thing that I do find myself using quite a bit though is uh, using Blitz Cache to only uh, look for certain SQL handles in the plan cache. And this actually comes back to something that I covered with SP Quickie Store, where um, you might be looking at the blocked process report, or you might be looking at the XML deadlock report. And, uh, you know, when queries lock and deadlock, you know, it's not always obvious from the query text in those reports what like what the plan would be and why why that why they f end up deadlocking and locking so much so uh it but in those re in those reports they have sql handles in them for the queries that were that you know sql server thinks were, were involved in the blocking and deadlocks it can sometimes be misleading but that's a story for another day so um it's, it's always i find it useful to look in the plan cache to find uh, by sql handle queries that come out of there um, it's been my experience for some reason, uh, you know, I'm, well, it's been my experience that for some reason, uh, the, it, like the finding things by those SQL handles and query stores been, been, uh, a lot of, a lot, lot more misses than hits. Um, not sure why it might, it might, might be the auto capture mode or it might be some other, you know, internal thing that is keeping queries out of there, but, um, uh, I, d I find that I have much better luck finding an execution plan in the plan cache for a lot of the, the blocking and, and deadlock report queries that come up. So I end up using that quite a bit. And then, you know, finally, of course, if you only care about, like, plans from a database, then, you know, you can filter, zoom right into that one single database and, I don't know, have a 
long and fulfilling day of laughing at query plans. Um, that's, that's usually usually the stuff that I do with it. Uh, there are some other kind of interesting parameters too. Uh, I guess if I had to pick some others that might might get you all excited, uh, skip analysis is a is a good one, especially if servers are really overloaded or you have really big execution plans, or you know uh, you just want quick results. Skip analysis will skip all of the XML stuff, so you won't uh, you won't do all the XML shredding and parsing to find particular issues in there, which is sometimes fine honestly because you know uh sometimes you don't need it sometimes you just need to get results back and you can figure things out on your own but uh that's a good way to get results much faster is if you use the the skip analysis parameter so uh that's generally the stuff that i end up doing with blitz cache uh it is a very good store procedure for um i think a lot of the uh the warnings it gives you about what's going on in execution plans are really valuable uh, you know, especially uh, for, you know, some of the stuff that is not quite as easily visible uh, to to people who aren't used to used to looking at execution plans, uh, and you know, it's all the, the the warnings that show up in the the warnings column are, are really good sort of high level overview of stuff that ain't good. It's also it's also a, a good set of stuff to to have in there because. Um, there are there are query anti patterns that it that it picks up on that people might know uh can be bad and seeing it show up in the warnings they might do a little bit of research and, and dig deeper into just why they've made a bad choice in the way they've written the query. You know, table var table variables, scalar UDFs, um things like that. All good things to know about. So uh, I just ate lunch before this one, so I'm a little sleepy. I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have some espresso before I do this next video, and then I don't know. It's also hot in here. These these recording lights are. I feel like a rotisserie chicken. Sometimes I feel like I kind of look like one. I get this pink hue. <laughs> it's unnatural pink, pinkish, orangish hue to me. That a little disturbing. I don't know. Anyway. I'm going to go make some espresso. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned a thing or two about uh, SP Blitz Cache, about the, the, the plan cache, about, well, I don't know, love, life, dancing, caffeination. Uh, I, I, will, I will see you in another video. Uh, don't forget to do the old like and subscribe. Um, I, I, I record as often as humanly possible. Alright, cool. Thanks for watching.